Marching for hundreds of miles, only rations to sustain you, and dealing with the threat of death day after day. The campaigns of World War II drove a soldier to their very limits. Across the conflict, allied or Axis, there would be hundreds of thousands who would abandon the front line and desert their duties. Yet, doing so had consequences. Some could face hard labor and be forgotten in a foreign land. Though for many, desertion meant the most dangerous thing you faced in the war were people giving you commands. Welcome to History on Fleet. Today we look at the horrifying fate of deserters in World War II. Deserting one's duties and leaving the front line was a markedly consequential choice for any Russian soldiers in World War II. After the German invasion of the Soviet Union, the tenor of the war changed, and so did the commands from the top. Stalin would issue the infamous Order No. 270, arguably the most nihilistic order given in modern wartime. Fight to the last. Deserters can be shot on the spot, and essentially banning surrender. Many attribute Stalin declaring, there are no Soviet prisoners of war, only traitors. So, yeah. Desertion was quite the ordeal for any Soviet soldier. In practicality, commissars commanding Russian soldiers on the front line did very little executing of soldiers. Yet this isn't to say that it didn't happen. Far from it. What the Soviet forces used, as they had done in the Bolshevik Revolution, was barrier troops. Military units purposely placed at the rear of the front line to keep an eye on any panic of desertion. And wouldn't you know it, Stalin used the NKVD and not the Red Army for such deployments. By the time the invasion of Russia had slowed in December 1941, the NKVD had detained over 600,000 soldiers who had fled from the front. Chillingly, only around 25,000 were arrested. The rest were simply reformed into units and sent back to the front line. Though with the nefarious NKVD overseeing such matters, it shouldn't come as a surprise that over 158 servicemen were sentenced to being shot during the war. The United States entered World War II following the attack on Pearl Harbor by Imperial Japan. Equipped with the most modernized and numerous armed forces on the earth, the United States could fight the war in both the Atlantic and Pacific theater. Over 16 million Americans served in the war, and the loss of life would reach 400,000 from the bloody global conflict. Curiously though, so large was the American deployment, only around 10% of US Army soldiers saw conflict. Fascinatingly, around 50,000 American soldiers deserted in the European theater, a substantially high figure given the number of men at the front. The picture clear from interviews of deserters and accounts from the front line give a clearer picture of desertion. A key detail that played into the high desertion rate was frontline soldiers not turning in fellow frontline deserters. The European theater's long, sprawling campaign from D-Day to the liberation of concentration camps was continually breaking soldiers down. Many saw deserters as broken souls who could stand no more. There was no sense of betrayal from fellow soldiers, only sympathy. Some units saw higher rates of desertion than others. These were uniformly captained by junior officers. A captain who leads from behind, who can never be found, who can never be confided in, would only contribute to desertion. Finally, the strain of war simply cannot be underplayed. Many deserters' accounts detail utterly exhausted soldiers wandering off into the night, far from consciously doing so, their bodies simply taking them away from the carnage of the front. Around 21,000 American soldiers would be given sentences for desertion, yet only one was made an example of. Of the 1.7 million court-martials held by the U.S. during World War II, approximately 21,000 U.S. soldiers would be sentenced, including 49 death sentences. Yet only one of these death sentences would be carried out, and that would be for Eddie Slovik. Slovik's story is as sad as it is entirely human. Initially, he was unfit for military duty thanks to a criminal record from a wayward childhood, yet was reclassified and drafted into a war he likely never imagined himself in. Slovic's service in the war paints the picture of someone who simply didn't want to be there. Initially, he became separated from his infantry regiment after an artillery attack near Elbeuf, France. 
When Slobik returned to his regiment, he told his company commander he was too scared to be on the front line in a rifle company. His company commander denied his request, and Slobik said he'd run away if he wasn't taken away from the front line. A day later, he did. John Tankey, a private in the regiment, spoke to Slovik and told him to change his mind, but Slovik only said his mind was made up. Unfortunately for Slovik, his desertion came at a time when Allied gains in the Battle of the Bulge was just ahead, but the human cost was extraordinary. Allied soldier morale was viewed as the most precious commodity. Slovik was tried by court-martial in early November 1944, a little over a month after his desertion. In the French village of saint marie aux mines Slovik was executed by firing squad on the morning of January 31st, 1945. Strapped to a post with belts, Slovik was shot with 11 bullets, and he was defiant till his last. Slovik would openly claim he was being executed to be made an example of and for his criminal past more than for desertion. As the only American execution for desertion among tens of thousands who did, Eddie Slovik may well have had a point. German soldiers of the Wehrmacht faced several different outcomes for desertion. It depended on who got a hold of them first. Should a German soldier desert his fellow soldiers along the battle on the Eastern Front, this would likely mean death, as they would become prisoners of war. A roaring 90% of German soldiers taken as POWs at Stalingrad perished. Around one-third of German POWs would die in Soviet captivity, many across a full decade of hard labor, mining coal in Donbass. Becoming a Soviet POW having fled the war was likely worse than any horror the conflict could serve a soldier. This being said, a surrender to Yugoslavian or Italian partisans was a sure path to punishment and death for Wehrmacht deserters. In a radically different turn of fortune, German deserters captured by British or American forces probably couldn't believe their luck. These deserters would be taken in as Allied prisoners of war and were shipped to the USA to live in some 700 camps across rural America. Unlike many stories of POW treatment, the U.S. camps for German POWs were, frankly, plush. Well-fed to the point of gaining weight, given two packs of cigarettes a day, and riding to camp in Pullman cars. Most German POWs were near delighted by the outcome they faced. Along with Italian POWs, some 425,000 German POWs found better living conditions in the U.S. than in Germany. Welcome to farms from Louisiana to Montana, with many commenting the experience lifted and shaped them. While the Allies may have treated Nazi deserters with a degree of humility and humanitarian cause, the same could not be said for the Nazis themselves. The German forces would execute some 15,000 soldiers for their desertion during the war. This being said, the monuments since erected across Germany display fascinating and profound reflections on war in totality. In what can only be seen as a profound reckoning with the past, Germany has come to take a remarkably different view of its World War II deserters. In World War I, Germany would execute only 18 soldiers who deserted the mind-shattering carnage of the conflict. In stark contrast, the Nazis would execute some 15,000 soldiers under their command for doing the same in World War II. Across Stuttgart, Berlin, Tübingen, Kassel, and Bremen, Monuments have been erected commemorating and celebrating the brave decision of resistors to the Nazi regime. Monuments have also been erected in Vienna, Austria for victims of Nazi military justice. All these have been constructed on the mantra, desertion is not reprehensible, war is. In a moving reflection of the futility of war and all that it lays waste to, these one-time deserters have come to be seen as heroic, brave figures of defiance. Desertion in war has always been labeled as an act of cowardice and lacking, yet in retrospect, these figures who resisted Nazi orders have come to be seen as examples. In the opening ceremony of the memorial at Ballhausplatz in Vienna in 2014, the slain deserters of Nazi command were upheld in the strongest possible terms. Heinz Fischer, federal president of Austria, would wisely state, everyone should know that it is honorable to follow one's conscience in the confrontation with a brutal, and inhuman dictatorship, and to be on the right side. Chairman of the Greens in Vienna, David Erlenson would state, desertion is always an act of peace. Little has been written or said about those who deserted the Nazis, but they hold lessons the whole world can learn from. This is History on Fleek, and we'll see you next time.